event, Distributech 2023, one of the sponsors of these interviews. And these are interviews with thought leaders from around North America and the globe. Uh, our sponsors are H2 Scan. H2 Scan is uh, the leading sensor uh, manufacturer for hydrogen sensing uh, in a lot of different applications and transformers in uh, battery room safety, in uh, processes in safety and in industrial, and in the future hydrogen economy. So I wanna thank our sponsors and I wanna thank all of our guests. And I hope you enjoy this interview. Our next guest is John Bucciarelli. John is the president of S.D. Myers, a company I know well. I used to be part of the S.D. Myers family. Um, I, I'm still part of the S.D. Myers family, you, right? You certainly do are. Do I always have a room at the end? Always have a room at the end. <laughs> Excellent. Lights on. Uh, yeah, so John, do we know each other well enough so that we can go right into this thing. Uh, I know this, but they don't. When did you get involved in the power industry and why? Yeah, uh, I got involved in the power industry about four years ago, uh, coming to S.D. Myers in the operations side of business. That's my, my background has been in that a lot. Uh, started at General Motors uh, for a lot of years there and then got into a startup bioplastics company. So a lot of my career has been in uh, processes, systems, operations and things like that. So I got into the power industry about four years ago after uh, my boss, Dale Bissonette, uh, brought me into SD Myers. I think I was one of the recruiters. I had breakfast with you and I told you you should do this years ago. You did. I remember that interview really well. Yeah. It was about an hour long interview yeah. and uh, we had a great conversation. So yeah, thanks for having me here today. Yeah. Good. Um, most people may not be familiar with SD Myers. Tell me a little bit about SD Myers uh, when, when you first joined SD Myers now and in SD Myers in the future. Because as the president of SD Myers, uh, I think you're only the second non-family member president member uh, president of SD Myers, right? I believe that uh, is correct. Yeah, and and that's a that's a change in and of itself. Um, but tell me a little bit about SD Myers. Yeah, so SD Myers is, as you know, is a reliability company. Uh, we are all about reliability of electric power systems, and specifically the heart of that system in the transformer. And so we do a lot of work in the testing and diagnostic area, repair, engineered products, all these things that allow customers to have better reliability of their electric power systems. Excellent. So, the, I want to talk about the industrial world, the, the power. There, there's two users, great users of power. Um, the generation people, utilities, generate the power, they distribute it. Communities are users of power, so anybody that takes their power. But they're pretty much at the, uh, the behest of the utility company. Hey, you're going to, and it's pretty steady state. Uh, SD Myers is known for um, an incredible reliability program for industrial, not just I would say all North America and some of South America, but um, industrial companies have a different set of problems, okay? And those problems uh, are, have been exacerbated by supply chain. Everybody's had those problems. There, in many instances, if you're in the paper industry, for instance, you're working on penny margins. You're not working on macro margins. So you've got a lot of these high energy users, petrochem, refining, paper, glass manufacturing, that require steady state power. But they're not getting steady state power anymore. There are blackouts that uh, the, the utility industry has to measure every millisecond of blackout residentially. They don't have to measure a blackout at an industrial plant until five minutes are gone by. Try to run a plant for five minutes of no power, right? It's, it's a big issue. Distributed energy is coming in. You see people putting in microgrids, all of those kinds of things. So as you see the industrial, your customer base, what are the big changes that they're having to deal with as it relates to electric power reliability? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up about industrials. Our mission you know as part of a good place company and good place holdings is uh, we serve the industrial market our our focus and attention really goes to the industrials uh, a lot of times internally we talk about the underserved you know and those, they are underserved yeah those that don't have the the means or the wherewithal or the knowledge uh, to be able to manage the reliability of their electric power systems and that's where SD Myers comes in uh, since 1965 this is what our founders stand uh, wanted to do. Like he wanted to make sure that customers like the industrials had a reliable electric power system 
starting with a transformer and then branching out from there. And so as we really work hard, uh, over 80% of our customers are industrial customers in America. And so uh, we work really hard to make sure, one, that they understand their electric power system, which a lot of industrials don't have the, the means or the payroll or the manpower to be able to understand what they have in electric power system. They want to know that it comes on and it stays on. Uh, and so we, you know, we do a lot of education for our customers to make sure. And then of course we also provide the sampling, the diagnostics, and we, uh, we, you know, we take great pride in making sure that we are, are the people that they look to to keep their electric power system running and being safe and reliable. You've seen those before, safe and reliable, safe and reliable. Are our characters yeah. at yeah. SD Myers. Yeah. The, uh, so if you look at the industrials, one of the they are kind of at the bottom of the food chain of supply chain, because if uh, a utility wants X number of transformers, they get first dibs. Well, transformer lead times have gone way beyond what they've been in in the ever. Right, we're now at the point. Some of the uh, the larger, more unique transformers are three and a half to four years out. But even a power transformer in an industrial thing is two years out. So the idea that we could run it, hey, we knew we had to change it out, we'd buy a new one. It doesn't work that way anymore. They've got to do a lot better management of the existing infrastructure that they've got while they do life cycle planning for the future. It's it's a harder thing than they've ever had to do. So when you when you think about that. What would be the, if you could say, here's a formula, and I'm running a steel company, a steel plant, give me a formula for how I continue to maintain the existing base that I've got while I wait on them delivering two and a half years after they deliver to the utilities. Sure. Yeah, give me the formula. Yeah, so first I want to make mention too, you said, mentioned the bottom of the food chain, and I know a lot of things like that, but I, we also believe they are the, uh, the doers. They're the ones that are getting things done in, in corporate America and making sure we have our cars and our steel and all those things. And so uh, there's great value, and when they don't have power, uh, you really see that effect in the in the America, in, in, in cor corporate America as well as common America. We see those types of things. Um, but as far as it goes in terms of their reliability, yeah, it's so important. We've seen specifically in the last couple years a very big spike in desiring for companies to know the condition of their transformers because of those lead times. Uh, before they may not have paid as much attention to it, but now that they know that they can't get something for 50, 60, 70 weeks, uh, they're much more concerned and want to make sure that they're taking care of it. So from our perspective, what we try to do is we try to lay out a comprehensive plan that says first, this is the criticality of your system, your fleet of transformers, uh, and then we take it way beyond that, many steps beyond that, and say, here's the condition of each transformer. Here's the, the risks that are associated with each system going down. And then we lay out a plan for the customer to have an awareness and understanding of their system so that they can take the necessary steps to protect it. And they know that best, and as we talk to them and spend a lot of time interacting, we're able to pull that out of them, and, and they, we have a relationship with them that shows, oh, okay, it's not just about this box or that box or this switch or that switch, it's really about your system and what they're trying to accomplish, and we come in and try to help them manage that from a safe and reliable aspect. Excellent. You've got a data management system that they use, right? I think it's called Dashboard. I'm pretty familiar with that. That has become one of the most powerful tools that you give to somebody, and it's got a tremendous amount of data. Uh, just, you know, trust me, look up SD Myers and look up Dashboard. However, how, here's the problem. You also have a lot of people that understood the power system that are now retiring. The next generation coming in doesn't have that same native intelligence, that, that generational intelligence. So they're going to rely even more on information, data that you give, awareness and, and understanding. Almost to the point of, well, tell me what I ought to do, John. What, what do I ought to do about this transformer when the condition says this? How are you handling that kind of... It's a sea change because now people are looking at you as more responsible, looking at Myers, more responsible for helping me make wise decisions about whether I operate. You're operating a furnace transformer, right? That's running a line for sometimes up to six months. The, 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 you, don't, you really don't want to shut it down, but if it, 
if you, we're gonna fail and that we're gonna shut itself down, you really wanna shut it down under your planned outage, right? So tell me a little bit about how you're helping uh, the marketplace make good decisions. Well, you mentioned Transformer Dashboard, and so when we started Transformer Dashboard a dozen years ago or so, it was the gold standard in Transformer monitoring, and uh, just being here at Distribute Tech, if you go anywhere to any booth, what you'll see is everybody has a dashboard now. And so dashboards uh, are a very common thing now, and that's a, it's a way for people to manage their systems at a glance. Uh, going beyond that, it's understanding what that tells you now, what the information is telling you about what's happening with your system. And so what we do is we partner with companies. We, we always talk about collaborative and cooperative uh, customers of ours, and those are ones that uh, it's a dialogue. You know, we we give them knowledge and information, understand their system, and then we can also give them recommendations on how they can better manage their assets and their fleet of transformers or whatever uh, electric component that they're trying to manage. Uh, but it really comes down to understanding the testing, the data, and really taking action. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, we we kind of play that role of the uh, Hawkeye for them, right? We're watching it, we watch the dashboard. So we don't just uh, take a test and do diagnostics and send a sample report to them and allow you to figure it out on your own. Our folks look at it and if they see something, uh, we have critical alerts and assets alerts. And so we'll call and we'll say, this is what we're seeing. These are the kinds of things that could happen if we don't address certain things. And collaboratively and, and cooperatively come to a solution that best meets their needs, their budget, their timing. Because like you said, uh, you can never really afford an unplanned downtime. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Some of them were, I've seen some that were disastrous. So I, I got a new motto for you. See something, say something, do something. You know? that, that's the next part of do something. Um, a lot of the, the, the maintenance work, because you also have field service crews that work in the industrial market, work in the utility market too, but um, a, a, a lot of that is um, repair business, reactionary. I got a problem, come and fix it. Have you seen a, a, a tendency to change to more proactive, less reactive, or is it still as reactive as it's always been? And if it is, how do you get companies to say, look, at your next turnaround, do something? You know, take a, re, uh, a proactive approach to transformer reliability and do something. That could simply be, you know, processing on the oil. It could be inspecting, changing bushings because the gaskets all get, that's a weak link on a transformer is gasketing around bushings. So uh, I know that's been something that, that, you, that the company has been working on for a long time. Where are you on that right now? Yeah, uh, it's still very reactionary. However, we have seen a little bit of a shift to uh, preventative okay. and that excites us because we believe that if you can you know a little bit of prevention you know prevents a lot of care later on and so um, oftentimes you might think well we're a field service company and we like to go do these big repairs and things we really don't like our desire is to have a customers transformers be reliable maintenance free running all the time and things like that and so if we can do a little bit of work over a long period of time it'll keep them from that point of where it's a big repair or a massive downtime or a massive outage so we have seen a little bit of shift in that i think it's been mostly driven by supply chain and out of fear of, oh, if that thing does go down, I'm not gonna be able to get something, so I better do something, you know? And so we've seen that a little bit, and we're trying to, and we're really putting a lot of effort into being more preventative so that we don't have to do these major repairs and these major changes and major degassing projects and things like that where we can add monitoring, you know, do some monitoring type of situations or condition-based monitoring so that we know what's going on at all times and we can give them better indications, quicker indications, and earlier indications to do something sooner so that they don't ever have to worry about, do I have a spare that can be here in a week? You know, because you know, as many of these industrials, a week downtime is millions of dollars. Right, right, right. Yeah, we have one, uh, at one time, a. Uh, uh a manufacturing plant, let's just leave it at that, that uh, lost a single transformer and it was a $52 million loss. It's kind of now 
one of the case studies in the industry is to put fear into the people, say, don't look, when it says it's got a problem, do something about it. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit. Another problem other than si supply chain problem is in, in every level, whether that's the trades level or whether that's engineers, we don't have enough of them to replace the retiring people and to replace the fact that we have a demand curve spike. By bringing a lot of manufacturing back to North America, because that's happening, you know, we, the supply chain taught us a lot. If you don't make it here and you depend on other people to do it, whether it's geopolitical or whether it's weather events or whatever, you're at great risk. So a lot of production's coming back here. It's putting even greater demand on, on that marketplace. That's putting even greater demand on you getting staff, both at the skilled and unskilled level, lab technicians, people out there. How are you addressing that? And have you seen any light at the end of the tunnel that is not a train? Yeah, well, what a great question. Well, you know I'm not from the electric power industry per yeah. se, uh, so I've you know learned a lot in the last four years for sure. Um, but in terms of that, that is definitely an area where we've been trying to focus. We see that all the time. Uh, they don't, uh, many people don't birth field service transformer technicians. They just <laughs> they just don't come out like that. We need to talk to some of the mothers out we, there. We do, yeah, yeah. we do. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the things that's really important. And in our, in our business, uh, people are so important to what we do, whether it's our technicians that go pull samples. You know, that skilled labor that is necessary to do these types of things, whether it's pulling the samples, running the test equipment in the lab, doing the field service work, running the rigs, those are all on-site, present, skilled jobs that pay very well in the, in the industry. And so um, a lot of times people will overlook that. You know, we'll talk about electricians and welders and pipe fitters and things like that. And I think that's making a little bit of a, a popular return thanks to Mike Rowe and some of those guys. But, you know, transformer repair and electrical technicians and things like that, those are equally as important. So we're trying to address that and we know they aren't, they aren't born like that. So we do a lot of training. You know, we look to hire for character and competence and coachability, and then we train in that. And so if I can be trained in electric power system, uh, anybody can be trained yeah, in that. Yeah, but you're a lifelong learner, so that's not fair. This no, is but true. Yeah, I agree with you, yeah. yeah. And we need to do much more of it. But, but well, we are seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. 2022, early on, was really uh, tough. Don't know what was going on uh, politically or things like that, but we struggled to really find people that were wanting to uh, be in, an, in a facility, you know, five days a week. I think the move to remote and things like that has really kind of swung the pendulum and I think it's coming back. I think people are really seeing the benefit of being together in community, right? That's, that's kind of how God designed us to be, he designed us to be together in community with one another. And so I'm happy to see that pendulum swinging back to where People see the benefits of being together, working side by side, having a face-to-face -face conversation that doesn't involve a computer monitor. I get excited about that. John, you know the reason we don't do these on Zoom? It's because face-to-face -face is so much better as a result of doing it. Uh, that's the last thing I want to ask you. You mentioned good place. As a good, everybody wants to work in a good place. So what does that mean to people coming to work at SD Myers? Yeah, so uh, you know, Good Place Holdings, uh, which is the holding company of maybe a half a dozen companies of which SD Myers is one, really espouses to be an organization that uh, runs their business by the values of the Bible. And so you may or may not agree with that, but I believe that uh, any company that, that decides to run their business by the values of the Bible is going to be a good place to work. And so when we talk about uh, decisions that we make and how we do things, we really, we really focus on three aims of every good place company. And the first is valuing people, you know, in general as God designed them to be, but also specifically through making sure they're trained and educated to do the job to the best of their ability. Uh, the second aim is to build up good places in the community. SD Myers is, I believe, believed to be a good place in the community of Talmadge, Ohio. And we aspire to do that in a lot of different locations around the country and hopefully around the world someday. And then the last thing is to be economically regenerative. And not to make a ton of money so that people can have a lot of money, but to make enough money to be able to do more of valuing people and building up good places. And so every good place has those three aims within our organization. SD Meyer specifically tries to fulfill a couple of more. We try to uh, create an environment where we have undying 
loyal customers, right? Mm. Those that really know that they can trust us and the things that we're telling them to do and asking them to do and supporting them to do. And then also creating up a reliable electric power system because we see it all the time with the blackouts and things like that. It's not very reliable and a lot of the movement away from that. Uh, so we want to try to do those two aims as well. So we kind of look at five aims of our business per se and really try to do all those things. And it's very different than uh, a corporate America might look at a business like SD Myers and, and we're okay with that. I would say, John, thank you so much. It's been a delight. I know you Thanks, got a plane Alan. to catch, so to see head on out. Thanks so much. This has been an APC Technologies production and we thank you for joining us. Our sponsors have been H2Scan and Distributech. And of course, the communities of APC Technologies, which is Transform Technology, Power Systems Technology, Green Energy Technology, and Women in Power Systems. So thank you. Mm -hmm.